It's called Glitter City and the city that never sleeps, but whatever you call it, it's Las Vegas. Hi everybody, this is J.R. Ibarra from Motorsports Magazine. We're in Vegas to catch the SEMA convention. We'll have conversations with some of the main players and heavy hitters in the high performance and racing world. So right now, let's head over to the convention center to catch a glimpse of this year's show. The Specialty Equipment Marketing Association, or SEMA as it's better known, has been conducting this annual convention for over 30 years. Anything imaginable that's related to the automotive performance world is on display for industry insiders to have a look. SEMA's Vice President of Special Project, Dick Wells, gives us an overview of what this show is all about. One of the beauties of this show is the, the fact that so many new products are introduced. It's, it's, the, it's the candy store for adults, if you will, and it's unfortunate that uh, it can't be open to the public because these are business functions and the public isn't admitted in. But if they were, they'd have a heyday in here because uh, everything that's new in automotive accessories will be found here, from, from the uh, smallest novelty item all the way up to what we define as the specialty products right. to personalize cars. Right. There's so many things in here. We think that there could be as many as a thousand new products introduced here at the show for the first time. We know there are 500 because they're entered in our new products competition. Wow. The, uh, there, there are a lot of things going on internationally as it pertains to this industry. It has become an international activity and uh, evidence of that is here in the show where we have a, an assortment of Honda vehicles that are with right hand drive that are brought over from Japan accessorized here and sent back to Japan where they're sold to consumers those those vehicles will never be sold here they are only accessorized here but I think it carries uh, carries forth the uh, the movement of the United States and what we call personalization People want a personalized vehicle, and no one can do it better than the SEMA member and the SEMA exhibitor in this show. This is the largest show of its kind in the world, and it is the only show of its kind in the world. And while we're in Las Vegas, I will say it's the only game in town. <laughs> so this covers really every little detail in the automotive high-performance industry. I know some people may think that this is just a high-performance show, but it goes well beyond that. Oh, way beyond that. You, you, can, you can bet that uh, original equipment manufacturers are going through here looking to see what's new on, on uh, some of the display vehicles, some of the innovative stuff that this industry comes up with that they might borrow, buy, mm -hmm. or improve on as, it, as an eventuality, and we'll see those things on new cars and new trucks. How many exhibitors do you have at this year's show? There are about 1,500 companies occupying 5,000 booths. To walk the show is a six-mile walk now. It spans about 1.3 million square feet. That's a lot of goodies. <laughs> so There's <laughs> nothing you can cover in one day, obviously, when you look around. No, it takes all of the four days available. Yeah. yeah. How many uh, registrant uh, participants we have come visiting the booth? The SEMA show is part of AAIW, Automotive Aftermarket Industry Week. And so there are two shows going at one time, the SEMA show here in the Las Vegas Convention Center, but the uh, MEMA, APA, uh, APRA show over, an Asia show over in the Sands Convention Center. It's a common credential. So there are about 65,000 people registered for both shows. Uh, and uh, about half of those are buyers. And what we're very excited about is the increase in international representation. More than 6,000 of those registered are buyers from foreign countries. So this goes in a global manner. I mean, this covers uh, Europe, Asia, and, and markets beyond. Absolutely. I have, I have said for many years that a hot rider is a hot rider, no matter where he is in the world, no matter the language he speaks. And now it isn't safe to say he because so many young women are getting involved too. But uh, they, the interest is there. It always has been. And uh, we are definitely a global industry and a global market 
and our exhibitors, the companies in this show, and the buyers as well, recognize that and they're marketing accordingly. While the SEMA show encompasses the automotive market as a whole, the overriding theme is very much tied into high performance and racing. It's not uncommon to see race cars of various types throughout the convention, and you'll also find big name drivers interacting with manufacturers and fans alike. Well, we caught up with one of the bigger names in drag racing in John Force. And we had a chance to ask him about the success of this past season. John, championship number seven kind of came with some struggle this year. Well, it really is and, and, and really not because they call it a slump. The bottom line, uh, we have, we're in a new test mode. Uh, we won Pomona and Phoenix and went into that and got a little bit lost, but we come out of it with the championship. So them good years made it happen, right, gang? Right. Oh, come on, let's get a little motivated here. They're wanting their autographs. They're not talking until they get their autographs. <laughs> now that you got number seven, what's in store for next year? Well, right now we got to run Pomona here in a couple of days. Uh, Tony's on his way over to the show. Uh, my other driver, and we're trying to pump Tony up uh, to number two spot. He's number three right now. So if we can end one and two like last year, that'd be really great. But uh, it's really exciting to come here with Goodyear and have a great, a great turnout like this. You know you're still love. Makes you happy. Right. Anything new for 98? Nope, 98, uh, just some new hot rods. We are talking about, uh, naturally, we're with Ford Mustang uh, and Castle GTX and all the people, all pro bumper to bumper. Uh, action collectibles, plenty of those are on the market with those Goodyear tires on them. Boy, I know how to get these plugs in or what, don't I? This convention also captures the latest trends in the automotive industry, as you'll find accessories that'll cover just about anything that has wheels. The show especially brings out many new inventions which manufacturers are hoping to showcase to the industry. And we came across a unique product which was being introduced to the convention for the first time. Now, how did you develop this product? How did, how did it go about you design this? This product uh, de uh, designed by my brother in overseas and about uh, 15 years ago in Asia. And I happened to, I happened to be in this pro product, like a testing with R&D here in California since 1990, especially California EPA and federal U.S. EPAs, a lot of testings. And this is a fairly new invention for you. Exactly. You know, even though you talk to GM or Ford, this is the one of the first and the new uh, product goes inside the inline hose or inside the air filter housing, uh, make a swirling effect like a vortex, okay. make more atomizer fuel, the benefit to the consumer of the vehicle, extra mileage increase and the performance increase. Mm -hmm. Even this product recommends California State BAL as one of the retrofit device. Mm -hmm. So what kind of results have you gotten from different tests that you've run with this device? Yeah, the testing shows between 7 to 24 percent, which is about between a mile to two per gallon increase, like um, Chevrolet pickup yeah. or Explorer or some small uh, Toyota pickup okay. overall. And the performance increase between 4 to uh, up to 15 horsepower on a big block, like 350 or 454. Right. Yeah. So what kind of uh, feedback have you gotten from those who've used the product? A lot. You know, right now, one out of three customers who's buying the product right now, either repeat or their friends or neighbors recommend it. Even some of the local college automotive department, they teach the product in the class. Yeah. Now, is this the type of device that will work on both a carbureted and a fuel-injected vehicle? Yep. Uh, in the, another comment, we have some product, they only fit like uh, between like uh, with 89 to 94 GM, mm -hmm. some product, performance product, yep. yet this product will fit from 1960 to all the way 97 passenger light truck, SUV, motorhome, RV, and carburetors, or EFI, or tune port injection, or you know, throttle body injections, anything like a BMW, Toyota pickup, Ford Escort to, you know, big sub suburban, even motorhome RVs. So foreign, domestic, young and old. Exactly. The Tornado comes in two typical product called, first of all, is this KI for injection type, and this is KC called the K, um, for carburetor or TBI type. This KI goes inside the inline hose between the air filter box and there is a throttle, there is a black hose and usually air traveling straight to the engine. Once we install the tornado goes in line, the air has to swell. Like just like you drink coffee, you add a sugar cream. What do you have to do before drink? You gotta stir it. Otherwise you know you're wasting the sugar in the bottom. Exact same principle because current some portion of fuel going out as unburned. So using the tornado the air swallowed means more atomizer fuel, maximize the efficiency, the benefit mileage and power increase. Now secondly, the KC unit goes inside of air filter housing round, means the air you're sucking straight down, with using the tornado, the air has to go through all the fin, means what more, atomizer fuel. 
it as, simply goes on top of the Yeah, real simple. Yeah. Installation, how long do you think it takes take to put it in? How long it takes? A couple minutes. Couple minutes yeah. And what about the maintenance? None. This is no moving parts, stainless steel. Yeah. Even, even we offer 30 days money back. There is no, uh, you know, uh, nothing, no money to lose. And there is a lifetime warranty with the product. Even some of the uh, largest 40 dealership tests in six months. And this, uh, so far, they installed over thousands in the service drive. Okay. Yeah, we have a nine store Goodyear, you know, dealers have installed over three, four thousand units already. Okay. Yeah, more customers buy or re you know, refer, uh, recommend to their friends and neighbors. Well, stay with us. We have a whole lot more from Las Vegas as Motorsports Magazine will continue right after these words. Now batting, Brett Butler. Butler, is a dinosaur. They should rename this place Jurassic Park in his honor. <laughs> dinosaur, huh? Did you know that Shunosaurus and Achillosaurus dinosaurs were capable of delivering crushing blows with their bony tail clubs? If education is important to you, talk to your child's school about raising academic standards. Call 1-800-38-BE-SMART for a free booklet and be a big league parent. <laughs> uh, even my third grader knows that. Smart kid. January 8th, Amy Narvejo was saved from freezing to death by the National Guard. Were it not for their employers giving them the time to answer the call, this story might have had a different ending. To every employer who supports the Guard and Reserve, thanks for making us your business. Welcome back to our coverage of the SEMA convention from Las Vegas. Well, when you talk about some of the famous personalities of the racing industry, no one could be more noted than the queen of performance, Miss Linda Vaughn. And as usual, she was making her annual appearance at this year's show. Talk about your role here in the industry and what it is that you're doing, especially in a show like this. Well, I've been with Hearst for 30 years, and Prolong has come on board to sponsor my Hot Rod Lincoln. And uh, Hearst and, um, and Prolong have got a, a little combination of smoother shifting, using the Hearst shifter and Prolong super lubricant. So we're working together as a team. Of course, I work with all the racing teams, and I really work with the engineers of the uh, racing. And wh what we're coming up with is smoother shifting, safer products, and hey, the guys are loving it. And I love this show. I get to talk to all the consumers that sell our products, but I get to see all the race drivers too. So it's a wonderful show. Yeah. The ladies enjoy coming. It's something for the entire family when we get involved in our sport right here. You've seen a lot of these shows in years past. This one is obviously one of the biggest. It is the biggest. I've been working hard all week long. This is a big show, but hey, it's worth it. I don't mind the blisters on the feet sometimes because I get a chance to see all the people from all the different countries. We've got 36 countries visiting here. And I'm very happy to work with all these people. And it seems like Curse and Prolong go hand in hand. So, hey, it's going to be a great show for us. I can't wait till next year. Yeah. Did you ever envision the show would get this big over the past few years? I have worked every SEMA show. And believe me, it's getting too big. I think we don't, don't need to be so repetitious. I think we need to protect our marketplace, take care of the people who are in the performance industry. That's what we started all about this show. And don't let it get too big. It's starting to really branch out. I think sometimes you get too repetitious. But the show's wonderful, and they protect their namesakes like the Hearst brands and the Morosos and the people that have worked very hard through the years and not forget Ford, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, what we're all about. So I really think that we're working together closer with Detroit now and the American Automobile, the love affair has been recreated. It shows right here in this show and performance is alive. The latest trends of the automotive industry is another aspect to this gigantic convention. And one of the many highlights of the show were the number of products available to the booming truck and sports utility market. Charlie Brendelin of DZ Products explains why this side of the industry has simply exploded. Truck accessories and truck sales in general have just skyrocketed over the last few years and obviously that affects uh, companies such as yours. Yes it has. Uh, truck sales and sport utility vehicle sales have, have been very, very well and everybody does want to personalize that vehicle for their own use. Why has it grown so much in the last couple of years? Well, I think everybody's still got that, that love of, of outdoors, whether they're camping or boating or, or whether they're going out four-wheeling or, or whatever they're going to do. They still need that vehicle that will haul the trailer or, or their, their toys. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the accessories really directly relate to the, to the type of sales that take place with especially utility vehicles and pickup trucks that are being sold on the market right now. Yes, they do. Um, we've seen everything from the, uh, the tube products, uh, the, the grill guards, nerf bars, uh, the color-matched running boards. Uh, like I said, everybody's looking for a different accessory for their vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
how, how has this affected your side of the industry? Obviously, this means a, a boom in the, in the type of things you're marketing out there. Yes, it has. Uh, we've had to be very, very proactive as far as coming out with products and part numbers as the trucks come out. Because when the trucks come out, people buy them and they're ready to personalize them right then and there. Uh, we usually see the customers in the first 30 to 60 days of purchase that vehicle. I know you've mentioned a couple items, but what are some other popular items that are being sold by your company? Well, like I said, the two products have been very, very hot the last 18 months. Uh, toolboxes have been a, a real, real boom in sales. Uh, that's still our fastest growing product category. Uh, a lot of people are buying pickups, and one of the first things they, they determine is, you know something, we still need some additional storage when they, whether they're hauling their camera or groceries or, or whatever. As you look down the road, as we're just a couple of years from a brand new century, how do you think the uh, industry will grow even further with trucks and sports utility vehicles? We don't see any slowdown in, in accessories or, or products for those trucks. Uh, we think that the sport utility vehicles are going to continue to grow. Uh, we see the trucks truck market is still going to grow very, very strong, and uh, there will still be that need and that want for additional products. With trucks and SUVs being the rage of the 90s, their ever-growing popularity has prompted many automakers to jump into the market. Well, Mercedes-Benz is one such company to join the mix, and they have come up big on their first try. Motor Trend Magazine's Doug Hamlin explains. It was a heck of a competition. We had uh, eight or nine uh, vehicles that made the short list. And uh, we put the vehicle through both uh, subjective and objective testing along with the other contenders. And the Mercedes-Benz, uh, it was kind of an easy selection when we got right down to it. Yeah. It just seems with all the different uh, types of makes and models that are being put up by manufacturers, both uh, foreign and domestic, the competition is getting tougher every year. Yeah, it seems like uh, five years ago you had the big three in the compact sport utility category it was the Explorer and the uh, Grand Cherokee and Blazer. Uh, and now you've got pretty much 20 different brands that have jumped into the battle. Uh, Mercedes really distinguished themselves with the M-Class, though, in that many of the other products that are out there by uh, being offered by other brands are built on other platforms, whereas this is a brand new product built from the ground up, um, all four-wheel uh, uh, drive, independent suspension, uh, brand new V6 engine in it. Uh, it's uh, it's both an on and off-road product that that is just it's phenomenal, it really is. When you talk about the testing process that your magazine puts it through, what are some of the tests that it that it goes through? Uh, well, we'll do a we'll do a zero to sixty, uh, and then we'll do a, a skid pad sixty back down to zero. We'll run it through a slalom, uh, and then we'll go off road with it. And uh, in this vehicle, it's got uh, electronic uh, traction control, um, uh, very revolutionary. Uh, what you'll see is that this is a product that you really can't uh, get stuck. I mean, it, uh, it it's unstoppable. Uh, I had a chance to drive it on the off road course okay. in Vance, Alabama, last week when we presented the award to Mercedes and uh, and to see uh, slippage in one tire and then that tire would you know, it will break and the torque will then automatically be shifted to a tire that has contact so uh, you're not losing anything uh, it's just maybe somewhat of a delay as traction is shifted and you then begin to climb out of whatever predicament you're in. Right. Aside from the, the performance aspect I would imagine the design and the way it appears also is a factor in it. Oh yeah, the styling is, uh, I think, uh, is very 90s. Uh, I'm not going to say it's edgy, but I think it's very 90s. Uh, it somewhat appears smaller than it is in terms of uh, cargo and uh, towing capacity. This It can haul 5,000 pounds. Um, but it's also set new standards in safety. Uh, first sport utility vehicle to have not only front, but also side airbags. So the, the customer is not compromising safety at all. As a matter of fact, you've got more safety than, than most competitive vehicles in the category. What's the rough cost of this vehicle? Uh, base price uh, would be about $34,000 for the entry-level model, and then 40000 just under 40000 for leather, sunroof, fully loaded. And that's pretty much the same with other sports utilities out that are out there right now. Oh, no question. I think uh, Mercedes knew that if they were going to be taken seriously by the consumers here in North America, that they had to make the vehicle competitive in price to, say, explore. And that's exactly what they well, did. Well, stay with us. We'll have more from Las Vegas and the SEMA Show as Motorsports Magazine continues right after these words. On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Seat, not the best to drop up. Seat, Don't want that big old bag to pop up. Backseat, baby. Put that booty in the backseat. Backseat, baby. Have that in case you never meet up. Here to remind you to put them behind you. Backseat, baby. Oh, look at here. Backseat, baby. 
to stay alive even when I try. The birth of this unique event can be traced to the work of performance pioneer Bob Peterson. And this year's show marked a special occasion for the publishing giant as he and his creation, Hot Rod Magazine, were beginning the celebration of 50 years of service to the performance world. Bob, obviously this SEMA show has a lot of significance as Hot Rod celebrates 50 years. It uh, certainly does. Uh, 50 years is a long time, but uh, it's gratifying to see how wonderful the show has grown and how big it is. Now, you really can be considered a founding father of hot rodding. Have you ever, or did you ever imagine it would be this big uh, in its industry? Well, I didn't invent hot rodding. It was around long before my time. But I think Hot Rod Magazine has been the catalyst that brought all of this together and that exposed all of the manufacturers and the geniuses to design all of these parts to the rest of the world. When you first thought about bringing out the publication, what was your vision for it at, at that time? Well, at that time we were, uh, well, mostly trying to come out with a magazine so the fellows could communicate. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of the fellows that uh, were building cars and they were all trying to find out what other people were doing. Mm -hmm. And so we tried to tell them uh, mechanically what to do, how to build the cars, right. and what to do with them. So from there, the publication just kind of blossomed over the years. Well, we went on the newsstands, and uh, in our early days, we used to outsell Time magazine on the newsstands. Wow. And uh, it still is a fantastic magazine, and yeah. uh, it has spawned the National Hot Rod Association. Yeah. It spawned this show, and it spawned a lot of other things that are still going on. Yeah. Now, you yourself are per also have had an integral part of creating SEMA. Uh, give me your impression of this year's show. Well, our first show, uh, we had under 100 booths, mm -hmm. and we were in the basement of the uh, Dodger Stadium. <laughs> so this is uh, quite a fantastic uh, finish, I'll tell you. Yeah. As you look around, what is it that you're impressed with with this show? Well, I'm impressed. Uh, everyone said it wouldn't last, that hot rodding was a flash in the pan. Yeah. And today, the same people, we had uh, 100 of them the other night, yeah. uh, are still making parts and still... Uh, coming up with new things and the big companies are now involved uh, Ford and Chevrolet and Chrysler and so it's just exciting to see all of this going on and in the early days uh, not many people loved us but now a lot of people do. Yeah. Now that Hot Rod magazine is 50 years old what's uh, in store for the next 50? Well uh, the company now has gone public and I'm looking forward to great things I'm still a part of it yeah. and uh, we have some young aggressive people and they're just going like mad. Yeah. Well, hot riding has certainly changed over the last 50 years, and in recent times, the trend has been towards the performance enhancement of foreign cars. Bobby Cooper of HKS USA gives us some insight into this growing part of hot riding. The last few years, the import market has just absolutely exploded. The import drag scene is what's happening. Um, if you go out to one of the events, you'll see that they'll bring in five or 600 cars easily, and they're mostly drivers. They just drive the car right to the event. They do have a spattering of full-blown drag cars that are trailered in, and that seems to be a trend. There seems to be more and more of that. But these events are happening at least on a monthly basis throughout the United States. It's a market that actually the American manufacturer has kind of ignored, just thought it was a trend, and now all of a sudden they realize it's not a trend and they're all trying to get on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Luckily for us, we've been in this business for a long time. We've done our homework, we've done our engineering. We're prepared for it. So this is almost like a totally another aspect to the high performance and hot rodding industry that's taking place. You know what it is? It's like the hot rod industry was in the late 50s, early 60s. It's exactly the same, only they're doing it with imported cars. And what sort of products are you providing in this aspect of the industry? We provide a whole line. Everything from turbochargers, intercoolers, exhaust systems, suspension pieces, everything. Is this primarily for European or Japanese type cars? Our focus for 20 years has been the Japanese market. We're now expanding off into the European market. There's um, the turbocharged cars seem to be going away from the Japanese area. They're still prevalent in the European market, and so we're focusing on those. We have products now for the Audis, for the BMWs, for the Mercedes, and we're going to expand that even further. 
I know in terms of the Japanese manufacturers, it seems like the Hondas and Acuras tends to be the most popular out there in terms of the, the newer hot rodding that's taking place. Absolutely the most popular here in the United States. That's not true in Japan, but very true here. Honda, Civic, uh, and the Acura are the leaders. What do you see down the road as the industry continues to expand? Um, I, well, to be honest with you, I believe that the kids that are now driving the Civics, the low-dollar cars, are going to be moving up to the European cars as they get a little older. And that's why we're focusing in that direction now. We will continue to service the Japanese market, of course, because that's where our roots are. We're a Japanese company. We are an engineering-based company. So all our products have a lot of engineering that have gone into them. Without question, one of the most popular of items that make up the performance and racing industry is that of the custom wheel market. And at this convention, you'll find wheels for any make of car imaginable. NK Wheels had one of the most interesting of displays that was complete with a European cafe and a Formula One race car. Now talk about the latest trends in wheel development. It just seems like this market in terms of the aftermarket industry has just exploded over the last couple of years. Uh, that's correct. I mean, uh, with the development of better suspension on vehicles, uh, it allows people to go to larger wheels mm -hmm. so that we can have more fun as far as designs go. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. And plus, uh, with the added technology in vehicles, with brake systems, uh, airbags, sensors, there's not too many things you can do to a car very easily. And by bolting on a nice custom set of wheels, it's about 20% of the overall look of the car. You talked about design, and that's one thing you notice about uh, your uh, display here is that the designs are just uh, coming up with such creativity now compared to years past where there were just such standard uh, stamped out wheels. Absolutely. And you know what that's driven by? Competition. It starts, get a bit better to the, than the next guy. So it drives you to do things such as wooden boxes, uh, adds a touch to the wheel. If you Our new Milano series, we've gone to an outboard face where the wheel is actually comes out past the face of the wheel. That's something that's totally new in the industry also. So you get, not only can you see it from the side of the car, now you can see it from behind the car. Oh, is that right? Catches a lot more flexion, yeah. reflection. So the competition between yourselves and other wheel manufacturers has created a lot of this creativity amongst uh, the industry. Absolutely. Besides that, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> get to do some crazy ideas. Uh, the Spider Series, 20-inch yeah. uh, wheels for Mercedes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Now you go into some pretty elaborate uh, production here to try to market this stuff as you see a cafe in the background and a Formula One car as well uh, mm -hmm. to try to catch people's attention. Absolutely. Uh, everything was tied in for the new Milano series. The F1 car, obviously we sponsor McLaren for, for Europe. Uh, the cafe, Europe. And then our new 20-inch uh, wheels out of Europe. Yeah. So we tied it all together. Yeah. What kind of other things can we expect down the road as things continue to evolve? Actually, it's kind of interesting. You need to stop by next year. We're coming out with a totally, totally new concept. Uh, I guarantee you, like nothing you've ever seen before. Well, that's all the time we have from Las Vegas. For Motorsports Magazine, this is J.R. Ibarra. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.